Work as Prayer by Eugenio Giordani or Foco. Foco, meaning fire, is the name given by Chiara Lubick to Eugenio Giordani, who lived from 1894 to 1980. A parliamentarian, member of the Constituent Assembly, a prominent personality in the ecclesial and civil world, he was also an author and journalist. He met Chiara in 1948, and for his extraordinary work at her side, she considered him to be one of the co-founders of the movement. Work as Prayer, Grotta Ferrata, December 8, 1961. Just as monks consider work to be a form of prayer, so too we, the laity, can do this by offering our work to God, consecrating every minute of our daily lives. This is prayer. Meeting of Married Focolarini Igino Giordani to the Married Focolarini on their vocation. Become holy for others. Help others to become holy. By helping others to become holy, we become holy ourselves. We see that this is in fact being done by numerous lay people, numerous married couples, numerous fathers and mothers of families starting from the early days of the church. St. John Chrysostom, who is the greatest of the fathers of the Greek church, said that all lay people should live like monks apart from celibacy. This means that holiness, perfection, is not only the duty of those who live in convents or monasteries. It is not the lofty goal only for those who wear a religious habit. It is not the possession only of those who follow a canonical rule, but rather it is the duty of everyone because we are talking about the fullness of life and about adapting our spiritual life to the will of God in all its fullness. This is everyone's duty. We all have, as our primary duty, to become holy, which is what John Chrysostom meant about being monks. What was the original definition of a monk? They were people who worked and considered work a form of prayer. They transformed their daily labor into a production of spiritual goods as well as of temporal goods. Monks were those who built roads, schools, houses, villages, and the ancient cathedrals, while at the same time building up their holiness. This, then, is the significance of the teaching of the Church Fathers, who were the ones who underlined the reality of the mystical body of Christ that is emerging today. They reminded everyone that they were always leading members of the mystical body, even when they worked, even when they walked along the streets, even when they did military service. They told them that they always performed religious work even when they swept the house, even when they built walls, even when they wrote books. They always did religious work if they did it in the Spirit of Christ, if they did it by offering their work to God. This was the way to consecrate one's daily life to God. This is what has been forgotten. In the last century, Rosmini said that the first wound of the church is that the laity has separated itself from the priesthood in the liturgy and in all priestly works. 
In other words, that we, laity, have forgotten our royal priesthood, or, as some say today, our common priesthood. There is a unique priesthood of the whole Church that resides in both priests and laity, because we are all called to build up the Church, to build up Christ. We all have a religious work to do in the 24 hours that we live every day, even though we have forgotten this. We have relegated the sacred to nuns, to religious and priests, and to monasteries, and have spread what is profane everywhere we go. We have separated God from man in the God-man. We have canceled out the Incarnation. Today, we have to reincarnate Christianity in our everyday life, in our own lives, and in the lives of others. From Diary of Fire, years 1922 to 25, 1954 and 1960. From the 1920s, we find in Giordani the tension between being recollected in prayer and the pressures of a hectic life in the world. A tension that in time, and especially after his meeting with Chiara, was resolved and harmonized by discovering that an intense life can be a 24-hour prayer along the lines of the attraction of modern times. In his diary, he gives no definitions of prayer, but rather his is a lived prayer. 1922 If it's impossible to have the pure peace of reciting Vespers, in one's ancestral home, warmed by a blazing fire, where grandparents and grandchildren, children and others are gathered for prayer, then let's say the rosary when we're on the bus or on the ferry or hearing the roar of cars in a tunnel or the vibrations of a locomotive. Our effort to separate ourselves from the carousing and materialism of the world and thrust ourselves into a spiritual life will be of much greater merit. A quarter of an hour in a church will not be a boring routine that makes us sleepy. Instead, prayer will be like a cool fountain in the midst of the exhausting drought society imposes on us. It's not easy in the drudgery of modern life to carve out moments of quiet to give our minds and souls the time and space to be recollected in prayer. The whirlwind around us absorbs us. The distractions of a complex life overwhelm our capacity for prayer. But as Lessing said, although the ability to pray is not always in our power. In God's eyes, the desire to pray is already prayer. In our churches, Jesus waits patiently in the Eucharist, that unspeakable mystery of love, calling us back to our true being and to our duty, knocking us off the paper mache pedestals our swollen pride builds to ourselves. If we don't have time in church, then let's say the rosary in the subway, in the smoky, raucous train, we can find a small corner as a shelter for our spirit. Life is sacred to this mystery of love. It is necessary to filter this love so that we shed all the incrustations of our senses and so that 
we acquire equilibrium, silencing our feelings and all human reasoning. We have to direct it towards that state of dead love, as Saint Mary Magdalene de Pazzi concisely defined it in an insight she had. It means to totally deny oneself and be completely absorbed and at peace within the will of God. With this love, one is predisposed to living humility, which means to have the clear and transparent understanding of who we are. And we are nothing. We can only do something by the grace of God. July 17. Some people just drift along in life. Others kill time. And instead, time is a precious endowment that we need in order to use our life to the full, like a candle that is consumed in front of an icon. To live is to consume oneself as a holocaust to God, expending oneself piece by piece, like the victims offered up in the old law, consuming oneself in the passion and death over a space of time that might be long or short. And life will become this sacrifice, this slow combustion on the altar of the Holocaust. If it is accompanied by prayer, if it is imbued by it, a sacrifice without prayer is a gesture without a soul, and thus useless. Without prayer, without raising a constant sigh to God, thinking of Him, Becoming Him, life is not lived. It is dead. It is just drifting along. It is killing time instead of killing oneself, one's old self. Killing oneself, one's old self. Consuming oneself almost like fuel that slowly burns is what releases new life, causes a rebirth, a true birth to true life, to God. August 24th. It is enough that we weaken our contact with God, reducing prayer, contemplation, humility and charity that we feel the anguish of living erupt in our soul. That weakening is in fact substituting ourselves for God. Our ego is a tyrant as exacting as it is vile. Its spirit is fear, not love. To give oneself back to God is to bring into the game of one's life omnipotence, stability, joy. It means to exclude from consideration the care of oneself in order to be free to care only about one's neighbors. Without God, what is life? What use is it? Young people can be attracted by the illusion of success. But for those who are old, all that is left is reality. And reality is that only in God does one live. Outside of Him is non-being, Satan, death. 
When you no longer find your place in human relationships, put yourself underneath everyone. Imitate Mary and you will find God again. God will then put you in your place, the one which he established for you from all eternity. <laughs>